MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.1. Dear Ms. Newman. Newman. The Ken Rose School for the Gifted has been presented with a rare and wonderful opportunity. Ken Rose. An anonymous donor has offered us a 1 to 2 matching grant, based on our ability to raise donations. 1 2. You were such a strong supporter of the school in our time of crisis last year. We are turning to you now in hopes of getting your support. Basically, for every dollar two you give, the donor will donate dollar one. Two, one. Thanks to your past support, we have brought the school out of the red. We have greatly broadened our donor base and are no longer dependent on a few benefactors. However, there is still much that remains to be done the salaries of our teachers remain relatively low compared to the national average and our facilities are in need of major renovation and maintenance. Help us make the most of this opportunity. Sincerely, Jane Hobson. Jane Hobson. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.2. I lay on my back, face up head pointing towards the security fence anxiously awaiting the first plane to fly over. The grass felt so soft, as if no one had ever lain there before. The breeze was crisp and tickled my nose as the bees zigzagged their way to nectar. I wiggled my legs in anticipation as my hands acted as a pillow behind my head. Then I felt it, the massive tremble of the ground beneath me. The insects flew up from their hidden spots amongst the blades of green grass. My body started to shake, much differently than before, from the force. Instead of fleeing the scene like my insect counterparts, I grabbed the blades of grass in anticipation. Just at the moment, I had an out-of-body experience. I saw the massive Hercules fly over me. It appeared to be less than a 100 feet over my body. 100. Oh my gosh! It soared into the sky with a hurricane-like gust of wind. With my mouth gaping wide open, I was speechless at the sight I had just witnessed. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.3 The hedonic character, with its focus on pleasure instead of functional performance, carries important implications for marketing communications for entertainment products. Whereas the marginal utility of additional information about a product is nearly always positive when consumers are striving for utilitarian benefits, for entertainment products a threshold exists for adding new knowledge when you reveal the identity of the murderer in the ads for your new thriller novel, the consumer's excitement might go down instead of up. Managers have to understand that too much information can hamper pleasure so that determining the optimal amount of information provision can be crucial for an entertainment product's success. Further, pre-release buzz plays a huge role in building consumer anticipation for a new entertainment product, with fine-tuning marketing communications to stimulate consumer-to-consumer -consumer excitement being key. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.4 a concept of heredity that encompasses both genetic and non-genetic processes is already emerging, and it can be referred to as extended heredity to differentiate it from the conventional, genocentric view. The narrow concept of heredity that has prevailed since the early decades of the 20th century has resulted in the exclusion from the realm of possibility of some very real and important biological phenomena such as the possibility that an individual's experiences during its lifetime can have predictable consequences for the features of its descendants. 2.0 Such effects were long dismissed as a chemical impossibility and a violation of the central dogma of molecular biology. Yet, a great variety of such phenomena have now been reported in the scientific literature. This side of heredity has been a blind spot for biology and medicine for decades, but the elephant in the room is finally starting to be noticed. 5P154 No.5 There are undeniable close linkages between the environment and the enjoyment of human rights which warrant an integrated approach to both the environment and human rights. 
A deteriorating environment impacts the quality of life of humans and affects their rights to life, health, work, and education, among others. More than 2 million annual deaths and billions of cases of diseases may be attributed to pollution. 2. The negative effects of environmental degradation and ecosystems decline can be measured through water shortage, fisheries depletion, natural disasters due to deforestation and unsafe management, and disposal of toxic and dangerous wastes and products, as well as increases in extreme weather events and in the spread of malaria and other vector-borne diseases. Moreover, environmental degradation caused by economic activities is often accompanied by violations of civil and political rights as it may intersect with issues of ethnic identity, social inequality, and discrimination. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.6 Studies of the ability of animals to alter perceptions of social desirability and to increase positive social interactions between strangers have been uniformly positive. When considered alongside the large numbers of anecdotal statements attesting to the power of animals to hasten the building of rapport between patient and therapist, as well as to facilitate meaningful interaction between the two, these findings have important healthcare implications. If the presence of an animal can make the therapist appear happier, friendlier, less threatening, and more relaxed, it seems reasonable to believe that some patients would achieve a greater sense of comfort more quickly. In addition to enhancing the patient's perception of the healthcare provider, the presence of an animal provides a benign, external topic of conversation on which to focus, which may further hasten and enhance the development of a working alliance. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.7 The perceptual and cognitive functions of your brain determine how you perceive an event. Suppose, for example, you have some difficult interactions with a resident physician because he has not been managing a patient's pain effectively. After this resident walks by without saying hello, the patient's attending physician asks to see you because of a problem. The way you interpret these events could create an anticipatory stress reaction. If, for example, you think the call means the attending physician is displeased with you, you are likely to trigger your fear or anger response. If, on the other hand, you take these events to mean that the attending physician must be preoccupied with last-minute preparations for a conference and actually wants to discuss the poster you are presenting together, you will not experience stress. Your choice of response to any event depends on what you perceive and how you interpret your perception. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.8 The above graph shows the payment method share in value at the point of sale, POS, in 2017 across four countries, Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, and China. 20174 POS In Japan, 67% of POS spending was in cash, which contrasted sharply with Hong Kong's 14%. POS 67%, 14%. In Singapore, the combined share of the two non-cash payments, i.e., e-wallet and card, was larger than that of cash payments, while the share of cash payments was 10 times greater than that of e-wallet payments. 10. In Hong Kong, the share of card payments accounted for 82% of POS spending, which made Hong Kong the leader in card payments among the four countries. POS 82% 4 Despite having a lower percentage of e-wallet spending at POS than card spending, China had a larger share of e-wallet payments than any of the other countries, comprising 36% of its POS spending. PO, POS 36% Slash Kong slash those slash payments slash for slash non cash slash of slash the slash larger slash Hong slash of slash spending slash up slash shares slash card slash payment slash all slash over slash POS slash took slash e wallet slash method slash being slash then slash of slash with slash payments. 55. For Hong Kong, non cash payment methods took up over four fifths of all POS spending with the shares of card payments being larger than those of e-wallet payments. MTC 
Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.9. Quince is a fruit that looks like a cross between an apple and a lemon and has a strong sweet smell. Still growing in the Caucasus in its wild form, this lumpy, yellow fruit that is hard and sour was usually eaten cooked and sweetened. Caucasus Reaching the Levant and southeastern Europe earlier than the apple, namely in the first millennium BC, the quince came to play an important role in Greek mythology and the Greek diet. Levant The Romans preserved it in honey and called it, appropriately, melimelum, honey apple. Melimelum This word is at the root of Portuguese marmalada from which the English word marmalade is derived. Marmalade marmalada The Persians and Arabs frequently combined meat and quinces, in stews for instance, and made quince preserves with honey. In medieval Europe quinces were used for stuffings, sauces, and a quince sweetmeat. In medieval Europe quinces were used for stuffings, sauces, and a quince sweetmeat. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.10. 64, Portable Humidifier. 15 dB, 15 dB. 65, 15 dB Whisper Quiet Operation. The 15 dB Whisper Quiet Operation will not disturb you while studying, working, or sleeping. 1015. 66, long running and automatic turn off, full filled, the humidifier runs up to 10 hours on continuous spray mode and 15 hours on intermittent spray mode, and it automatically turns off when empty. 67, better humidification, this humidifier features a tilted nozzle, which spreads cool mist to a wider range. The leak proof design reduces the possibility of accidental spills. 400 ml. 68, portable, at 400 ml, the palm-sized humidifier easily fits on any table. 3. 69, easy to use, one button controls the power and spray mode. Press the button once for continuous spray mode and twice for intermittent spray mode. To tum off the humidifier, press the button for 3 seconds. 1. 2. 70, tips, 1. Soak the cotton wick completely before use. 2. For best results, use mineral water, cold boiled water or clean tap water. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.11. 71, Backpack and School Supply Drive. 72. We coordinate a drive to assist local children in need of backpacks and school supplies to start the new school year. 73. Each child is given a backpack filled with school supplies. 74. All backpacks and school supplies are generously donated by the community. 75. We serve the children during the back-to-school season and distribute the goods in time for the first day of school. 76. Host a collection drive or donate to help a child. 77. Anyone can host this drive in their community. 78. Collect items from your neighbors, friends, family, or co-workers. 79. Make a monetary donation and we will credit it to the school supply drive. 80. When and where to bring donated items. 104. 81. Drop off hours, Fridays. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 1. Davis Drive, Salisbury, California, 55990. 82. Our office, I. Davis Drive, Salisbury, California, 55990. Asterisk. 83. Asterisk. Please ensure that all items are brand new. 630-101-1004. 84. Contact us anytime. 630-101-1004 MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.12 Bioethicists use different methodologies to find solutions to ethical problems. 
These methodologies have different backgrounds and are linked to different philosophical schools of thought. What they have in common is the aim to provide an adequate normative framework for processing and resolving moral problems. Generally, ethical methodologies can be divided into two models. Deductive methodological approaches distill ethical principles from a certain theory of ethics from which they then deduce ethical rules in order to be applied to a case at hand. Inductive methodological approaches do not work with preconceived ethical principles. They use experience and observation of the realities of a case at hand to develop answers to the ethical dilemmas experienced. Whereas deductive approaches are criticized for being too rigid regarding what is right and wrong and too remote from clinical practice, inductive approaches are criticized for being so focused on single experiences that they, at times, lose sight of the big picture. Yet, however strict the division may appear in theory, most bioethicists do not strictly follow one approach. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.13 The wandering spider Cupianius Sale captures its prey without the aid of a web. Cupianius Sale Although the majority of the invertebrates that it captures in the wild are those that walk, it is also able to capture flying insects. It does this with a spectacular and very precise leap into the air. Given that spiders have eight well-developed eyes, we might assume that they use visual cues to carry out this remarkable feat. However, Friedrich Barth and his colleagues have demonstrated that this is not the case. Friedrich Barth In an experiment, they covered the eyes of a hungry spider to temporarily blind it. Despite this incapacity, the spider was able to detect airborne prey animals up to 20 centimeters away and to capture them with a leap of several centimeters. By contrast, web-based spiders are able to locate prey a mere one centimeter away. Of course this difference between the two spider types is not surprising, web-based spiders do not need to detect moving prey because they rely upon their web. On the other hand, the advantages of long-distance prey detection to a mobile hunter are obvious. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.14 It is well known that the ancient Greeks, Indians and Chinese produced vast bodies of sophisticated knowledge, ranging over mathematics, medicine, astronomy, natural philosophy and technology. Indeed, much of this knowledge was appropriated and reworked by the Muslim and Christian scholars who are normally credited with having initiated the scientific project in the Middle Ages. So why then should we not also call these antique sages scientists? The simple but generally applicable answer is that their societies did not assign a specific social role to the scientist. What we would now recognize as science was always done in service of something else, not as an end in itself let alone an end that might be pursued in perpetuity. That something else may be leisure or statecraft, each in its own way forcing science to operate within a rigid framework albeit one that still allowed for considerable creativity and innovation and, depending on the ruling dynasty, sometimes even longevity but never autonomy. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.15 When people search out health information on the Internet, they typically use shortcuts and superficial searches rather than engage in systematic processing of online information. This is the finding of a study conducted by Clawitter and Harjitai, who interviewed a diverse group of American adults about how they seek health information online. Clawitter Harjitai This unsystematic searching out of health information is often blamed for a condition called cyberchondria, which is a belief by many people that they have a serious illness when in fact they do not. Because there are many digital sources of health news and information, people can easily access lists of symptoms although they do not have the extensive medical training needed to make sense of all this information, so people often erroneously diagnose themselves as seriously sick. Then they go to their doctors to tell them what is wrong and ask for specific treatments and drugs. Most times the self-diagnosis is wrong. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.16 
psychologists have conducted several laboratory studies of ordinary people struggling with messy disruptions, distractions, or constraints in situations that ask them to be creative. In one study, Charlene Nemeth and Julianne Kwan showed pairs of people bluish and greenish slides, asking them to shout out whether they were blue or green. Charlene Nemeth Julianne Kwan The experimenters had a trick to play, however, one member of each pair was actually a confederate of the researchers, who would sometimes call out baffling responses green when the slide was clearly blue. Having been thoroughly confused, the experimental subjects were then asked to free associate words connected with green and blue sky, sea, eyes. Those who had been subjected to a confusing mess of signals produced more original word associations, jazz, flame, sad, Picasso. There was something about the sheer disruptiveness of the setup that unlocked creative responses. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.17. Stephen J. Gould writes, We believe in hot hands because we must impart meaning to a pattern and we like meanings that tell stories about heroism, valor, and excellence, and we have no feel for the frequency and length of sequences in random data. Stephen J. Gould, dot. While this may be true at some deep level, it is certainly not the reason sports participants give for the reality of hot hands. Anyone who has ever played a sport will cite internal, felt experience in favor of hot hand phenomena. When you are hot, it feels like you can't miss, that every shot is just an easy layup. When you're cold, it feels like no matter what you do, no matter how much you concentrate, every shot you take is a brick. A plausible way of expressing these attitudes is that a player has a better chance of making a shot after having just made his last two or three shots than he does after having missed his last two or three shots. 91 out of 100 basketball fans led believe this statement, that is, they believe that success breeds success. 10091. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.18. In developed economies, up to 80% of the things stored in a typical home are used only once a month. 80. The sharing platform model increasingly enabled by new forms of digital technology creates new relationships and business opportunities for consumers, companies, and micro-entrepreneurs, who rent, share, exchange or lend their idle goods. Fewer resources go into making products that are infrequently used, and consumers have a new way to both make and save money. A number of companies built on this sharing business model have gained millions of members, considerable media attention and in some cases $40 billion plus valuation. 400. By making it easy for people and companies to use idle products, these businesses are squeezing much more value from the resources used to make them. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.19. If someone told you that your aunt is ill, you would probably assume that she has cancer, heart disease, had an accident, or came down with a common cold. What these conditions have in common is that they are all physical ailments. And yet, people can develop mental impairment, can be emotionally unstable or be socially isolated. These, too, are illnesses. Illness is defined as one of the components of health not functioning as well as it should. Although we may know this intellectually, we tend not to think of non-physical ailments when we speak of illness. That is because we view non-physical ailments as less serious than physical ailments, and this view is reinforced by the medical and health establishment. Evidence for this conclusion can be seen by health insurance companies only recently being required to cover mental illness in a similar fashion as they have covered physical illness for many years. Illness encompasses much more than merely being physically ill. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS Mini Test 1 No.20. Goal shielding occurs when the focal goal is prioritized and the other goals are forgotten in an effort to shield attention on the main goal. Theoretically, then, in the workplace, productivity, 
the most common focal goal, would be shielded from resource-stealing goals, such as creativity, leading to decreased creative performance. Although no research has directly examined creativity and goal shielding, one study by Shally suggests that creativity might not succumb to shielding effects in a similar way as other goals. Shally In her experimental study, Shally had two goals a productivity goal and a creativity goal. Shally When both goals were difficult, then creativity did not suffer and both productivity and creativity outcomes emerged. It was only when no creativity goal was set and a do-your-best or difficult productivity goal was set that creativity decreased. In other words, productivity was not shielded from the creativity goal. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.21 A notable feature of UK private sector corporate governance, compared with many other European countries, is the absence of employees from governance arrangements. Unlike many other European countries, there is no legal underpinning of employee representation on company boards or employee rights for works councils. In Germany, the Netherlands, and Norway, for example, employee board representation is widespread. This absence appears to limit the extent of consideration of human resource management issues in governance discussions between company boards and investors compared with Germany, where more information is supplied and more consideration given to questions such as relative pay. The situation is rather different, however, in PA of the public sector. Educational organizations such as local authority-run schools and universities usually make provisions for staff representation on governing bodies. However, as private sector involvement in the running of key parts of the public sector has increased, and as some parts of the public sector have become more autonomous from state or local authority control, the extent of staff involvement in governance bodies has tended to be reduced. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.22 in interpersonal encounters much of what persuades us is processed peripherally. For example, we do not usually consciously rate others on their level of attractiveness, and are not aware on a moment-by-moment -moment basis whether another person is smiling, is humorous, stands close to us, uses our first name, praises us, and so on. These behaviors are processed via the peripheral route, but they all affect the outcome of persuasion attempts. Likewise, if we go to the bar with someone and the person buys us a drink, we do not usually consciously think that we are in debt to this person and must reciprocate. Rather we naturally feel this pressure and so the likelihood is that the reciprocation autopilot kicks in and we buy the next round. Indeed, if we become aware that a direct attempt is being made to persuade us to do something, we begin to process information centrally. Then we may become suspicious of the smiles and praise we are receiving or wonder why this person is offering us something with no obligation. Under such circumstances a compliance attempt is likely to boomerang. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.23 Mark Hauser believes that you learn morality like you do language. Mark Hauser we have an inborn ability to extract the rules of morality from the settings in which we live. Researchers test this view using moral dilemmas, the most common is the trolley car dilemma. In the trolley dilemma, a speeding trolley will hit and kill five people stranded on a railroad track. Diverting the car to another track will save the five but kill another individual who is on that track. In the footbridge dilemma, to save the five people a person must push an overweight pedestrian off a bridge onto the track to stop the trolley. Evidence supports that people worldwide favor diverting the trolley to save the lives of others but not pushing someone for the same purpose. They distinguish harm for a purpose and harm because of one's actions. Results are so consistent across cultures that these may be universals in moral reasoning. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.2425 Many music historians draw close analogies between the changes in art and music. There are some, 
but comparisons of music with T are weak, because a painting is static and fixed in the time, format and perspective or the painting techniques in use when it was created. Not only is it locked in time, but viewing it may well depend on a great deal of historic knowledge to recognize the symbolism, mythology, allegorical or other identifying signs, and artifacts shown on the pictures. There is also the dilemma that, without a catalogue or description, we will not know who the people are meant to portray. By contrast, we can interpret music as we wish, and, if we choose, modernize the performance through new interpretations, even for a 400-year-old composition. 400. We are not restricted and can play works with different instruments. Reference to any modern CD catalogue will show just how many performers think they can provide a new, or better, take on classical favourites. CD Music can be compared to a garden, where we can find beauty in the flowers from shape, colour and perfume, and it is never static. Plants grow and change as does our musical appreciation. New features continually come and go and there will be weeds or mistakes. Overall, the appearance depends on the soil, the layout and the gardener. Even if many people praise the garden, then no two will ever see it from the same perspective, or detect the subtle perfumes in the same way, nor will we ever see the same garden in an identical way on successive visits. For me, such variations offer the pleasure of a garden, and are exactly the same factors which provide the excitement and individuality of musical performance and listening. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS Mini Test 1 No.2628 I went to my local supermarket in Ashkelon during the week of Passover. Ashkelon When I returned to my car with a cart full of food, I realized my key was missing. I asked in the store and also retraced my steps, but still no key. I told a security guard outside the store that I didn't know what to do. He asked me to show him which car was mine. He peeped through the window and saw my keys on the passenger seat. I had made the mistake of locking the doors without making sure I had the key. One problem solved, but now what do I do? The guard saw an electrician working next door and asked him if he had a wire they could ease through a tiny space in the back window and maybe manage to lift up the lock button. The electrician left everything and started trying to rescue my key. After ten minutes, I wanted to release him since he was getting phone calls about other work on his cell phone and was telling everyone he was busy at the moment. 1-0 But he was determined and kept saying, Never mind, we are going to get that key out. Dot. A young man with a mustache came to help, and patiently provided shade so the electrician could see what he was doing. 45 minutes later, after trying all sorts of ingenious ideas, he fished out the key by using a long metal wire as a fishing rod. 4-5 Then he opened the door with the key and wished me a happy holiday and went back to his work. I then locked the doors, with the key, and ran back into the shop to buy chocolates for them. Neither the guard nor my savior, appropriately named Michael, the name of an angel, wanted to accept them and said they had done nothing. Michael the young shade provider had disappeared as suddenly as he had appeared. Throughout the entire time, all the passers-by sympathized and each and every one of them told me it had happened to them at some point and they recalled how annoying it was. But thanks to the kindness of Tony the guard, Michael the angel and Jacob the shade, it wasn't annoying but an uplifting experience for me and also for the key. Tony, Michael, Jacob. MTC. Good job.